there was always like some kind of like weird, like mysterious thing around Judge. The fact that there was only like stories and urban legends about him, like you know, and obviously being an outsider, you always kind of just intrigued, like who was the singer or Judge, kind of you know. There actually wasn't all that much information about Mike you know, other than the music. And there's something wonderful about that, really, because that's art in a really pure form. Um, but I think it allowed people to invent, in a vacuum, whatever story they chose to invent about it. God, the stories, my God, and I didn't believe a single one of them because stories have been told about you, about me, about everybody, you know? One time, uh, Shelter was in Sweden, and we played with that band, uh, Refused. And then all of a sudden I hear, like, Dennis from Refuse on stage, he's going, run on Mike Judge, you know, something, Mike Judge, like some Swedish word. And I, I turned to him for a second, I was like, what the hell is he saying? And he was saying, free Mike Judge. And the whole crowd was chanting, free Mike Judge, because there was a rumor that Mike was in jail. <laughs> you know, whatever happened to Mike, someone said like he lives in Nutley, New Jersey or something, and he's like, you know, his family has a farm. There was the, Mike's a farmer. Um, I heard that one. You know, you would hear, oh, Mike lives like in a shack somewhere in the mountains because he hates people. Like Mike joined like a renegade motorcycle group, like all this crazy shit. The, uh, the rumor was basically Mike's a biker gang guy, you know? The craziest is still that I was like in the fucking Hells Angels in Germany and I killed a cop and that I actually rode around with the cop's head on my motorcycle. People really believed that. The people I was hanging out with at the time, they would always be like, who is this Mike Judge? And I'm like, it's fucking me, man. Just fucking rattle that fucking alcohol-soaked brain a little bit. It's me. Let it sink in. I was in a band. They called me Mike Judge. They're like, but you're nothing like that. I'm like, yeah. That's why it's so fucked up, stupid. I can't get away from the past. The band broke up, and I went home. And so I'm sitting in my little town in Jersey. I got nothing to do with myself and shit. So I start hanging around with you know, people who aren't like, you know, the nicest people, you know? Next thing I know, you know, I, not the next thing I knew, I knew what I was doing. You know, I, I joined a bike club. It was just one mistake after another for a while. You know, it makes sense. It, after being like a hardcore guy or a skinhead or whatever, like, where do you go? You become a biker. After we broke up, all I wanted to do was ride my motorcycle and never have any responsibility. Just, I just wanted to ride my motorcycle forever. Eventually, uh, you know, my father, you know, came to me and said that he had uh, lung cancer and that uh, they gave him like six months or some shit. I just went right into being around him and you know being with him. And uh, he lasted for like two years before he actually passed away. That was like the hardest, hardest, hardest two years, the most emotionally draining uh, time of my life was that time and the, that last like six months to a year was just, I wouldn't wish it on, on my, my worst enemy, how brutal that was. You know, my father, he was like a guy who was just like, you know, you're, you're a man and you man up, you don't, you just don't display the softness. He did say that he was proud of me and everything I, I did and that I stood up to him and everybody else and just, I had a goal and I 
do or die, I went for it for better or for worse. You know, after Judge had broken up in like 90, 91, and, and Grill Biscuits had, had broken up, and you know, a big chapter of the hardcore scene just kind of, it's like the, you know, the page got turned or, or whatever, it was changing. I felt bad that I wasn't in a band because when you're in a band, it's like it's you and your handful of buddies against the fucking world. They were like the family I didn't have, you know? And then all of a sudden that was gone. And, and then I loved Judge. Right there, get him. Get Just him. Don't you even do it, don't do yeah. it. Yeah. Look at him. I usually stand up and admit to my own fuck ups, you know, I always had. And instead of buckling down and fighting for it, uh, you know, I took my ball and went home. When I walked away, I just lost track of everybody. We were so incredibly tight for so long. Even like Gorilla Biscuits and Siv and Wally and shit, Arthur. I mean, we spent so much time together. Like our summers were spent in vans. And then part of me that's like hates myself because I didn't see like where their lives went, you know, like I, I just wasn't there for it. The good and the bad, you know, I just missed it all because I created something that I didn't want to face. You know, Judge is one of these bands that the idea of getting back together was, you know, would be amazing. You know, when some of these bands were getting back together, I think it just came up like, hey, Judge would be a really, you know, great band to see. And, and also, you know, who the fuck is Mike? Where is he? Where'd he go? So all of a sudden he pops up on like Facebook. And immediately I'm thinking like, okay, this can't be, you know, Mike. That I know, but it's Mike Judge with this like Misfit skull as his like logo on Facebook. And he's all about it. He's just like blah, 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 this and that. Yeah, you know, first of all, I never thought it was gonna happen. Never in a million, you know, people would, would ask me, is Judge ever gonna do a reunion? I'm like, dude, it is never gonna happen. Nobody had really been in contact with him and then Siv started talking to him. I know Siv had been working on this for a while. He really, this was like his baby, this was his project. He wanted this to happen. Mike and I spoke on the phone a lot, and you know, one of the things I said was, you can't bullshit me and say you don't miss it. Like, I sing in the band too, you, you miss it. We've been showing up for 20 years, going to shows, promoting shows, playing shows, doing interviews, doing whatever to, to you know, cause this scene to move. And, and I you know, said to Mike, like, you know, no offense, but like, you gotta, get back in here, like, you gotta show up. This doesn't happen unless everybody shows up. And I was like, you fucking haven't shown up for 20 years, man, you gotta help. And he was just like, you're right, brother. So I said, fair enough, that's all I needed, you know? Truthfully, I was a million miles away from playing in Judge again. I guess I just figured he was buried. Anthony Civarelli, uh, Civ, so he asked me a favor. You got to come to the uh, Black and Blue this year. GB is headlining it, and uh, we want you to be our guest. So uh, I say, all right, you know. The Black and Blue boys, they fucking treat us really good. I just have a fucking good time. I'm up in the fucking balcony. GB comes on. I'm just, I'm fucking just digging it big time, man. And uh, brought back good memories, man. Like, all of a sudden, like, it wasn't the bad shit that was flowing through my mind. It was just all those good times and all the cool shit we did. Anthony had this fucking rap before New York Crew, right? And he says this thing about me. My brother, Mike Judge is in the house. Mike took me out of Queens in 1987 as his drum tech showed me the world taught me what hardcore was about, what being a skinhead was about, what being a friend was about. This goes out to Mike, this goes out to you. Whatever you got left, let's get it out now. It's called New York Crew. Right there, I was like, I fucking leaned over and I just told my wife, I was like, I'm gonna doubt in my mind that you're just gonna play the next Black and Blue. <laughs>